we are what we eat. But how many of us know what we are actually eating? How many of us know what food does to the environment before it comes to your plate? How many of you know what food does to the farmer who is producing that food? Do you know? Have you ever thought? How many of you think before eating food about the farmer who has produced it or the fate of the farmer who has produced it? These are some of the questions which grappled me when I was studying my agriculture. After doing my PhD in agriculture, I had a choice. Like every young boy in the 90s, I was also very crazy about getting into Indian civil services. After reading the Indian economy, I felt I really understood about the Indian economy reading for an exam. And finally, by the time I got into the services, I was selected for Indian Revenue Service. But I also had a choice of joining as an agriculture research scientist. It was a tough choice. I made my choice to join as an agriculture research scientist. Thought I should continue with working with farmers. But the decision didn't last long. I'll come to that. Before I come to that, let's understand what is our food, what we are eating, how safe is our food. All of you saw this news sometime back. Pesticide residues in soft drinks and bottled water, but forgot the next day. Have you ever thought, how did pesticide residues come into this bottled water or soft drinks? If bottled water and soft drinks had pesticide residues, the water you use to make your tea and coffee also must be having, but we never worried about it. The news is short. The next day we forgot about it. At least this must be in your memory. Noodles having heavy metals. How many of you thought, how did these heavy metals reach the noodles? If lead has to be added to the noodles, probably lead is more costlier than the noodles. So nobody will add it, but it came. How did it come? If the ingredients used to make noodles had the lead, but the atta which you are making to use your chapati, atta which is used to make your chapati also must be having. Or the samosa which you are eating also must be having, right? But we don't connect the dots. Same is the story when you hear a story about pesticide residues in vegetables. You all got horrified. You all get horrified, but forget it in the evening. We all think food, if you buy in a good place, if you eat it in a good hotel, it's safe. Food is only as safe as it is grown. End of pipe solutions doesn't work. The pesticides which are used in agriculture, less than 1% actually kills the insects. 99% gets into the water, gets into the air, and comes back into your food. We look at it very casually. Everything which is happening around us, we look at it very casually. I'll take an example. While I was taking the lunch, I saw people painting there. What is that? Spray paint. Where does it go? Part of it goes onto the board. Part of it is into the air. You are all eating there. It comes there. We are all educated. We feel we can make connections. We never made. And we expect that farmer will make those connections and produce safe food for all of us. I think that's where there is the disconnect between what we observe, what we know, and what, how we act is the serious problem. It's not only about the pesticides. Do you know the eggs you buy in the market? What is the kind of eggs you are buying? They are haploid eggs. Haploid means they are produced without male and female mating together. That's the reason why if you hatch the eggs, they won't make ch chicken. But how they are produced? They are produced using estrogens. And what happens to those estrogens? When you eat those eggs, they'll come back to you. That's one reason today the puberty in girl child has advanced. The gynec problems in women has increased. The breast development in men has increased. Do you know last year's India Today's survey shows that the largest number of plastic surgeries done in India are to remove breasts in men. We got into that kind of situation where food, which is supposed to be healthy, is creating all these problems. It's not just the pesticides or antibiotics or growth hormones which are used in production, but also how they are processed. You might have heard the story last one week, 10 days, 
She was doing rounds in all the media, artificially ripened fruits. But why fruits are ripened artificially? If all of you want to eat fruits in off season, how do they do it? How do they do it? If you want mangoes in May, how do you get mangoes? You have to cut unripened ones, ripen it artificially, and sell it to you. The carbide ripening, the bananas which are seen uniformly yellow, what are they? They are all carbon ripened. The apples, the shiny apples which you see, what are they? When were they produced? Where were they produced? Do you know? California apples. You get apples from California. Can you keep it fresh? They are coated with wax. Go back to home, take out the apples in your fridge, just scrap it, you will see the wax. We are eating all that. The watermelons which are red in color today, they are injected with injections. Color, they are injected with growth hormones. The milk which is sold, you might have seen in the news for the last several years, there are reports which says the milk is contaminated with synthetic milk. If you want to have milk at 40 rupees a litre, that's what you get. We want food cheaper. And there is a competition between the companies. They pay low to the farmers. They also contaminate and then get away with that. All brands of milk sold in Hyderabad were found to have contaminated with the synthetic milk. GM Foods, how many of you know about this? How many of you heard about this? BT Brinjal. To tell you simply what BT Brinjal is, when pesticide is sprayed from outside, it damages the environment. Like I said, only 99% goes into the environment, only 1% kills the insect. So a scientist thought, why not we produce insecticide in the plant itself? So plant produces insecticide. So whichever insects eats it will die. But what happens to us who eats that? So there were several biosafety questions in front of us, which were never addressed. What you see here, the yellow, white, is a golden rice, which is going to come soon. You know why it was done? They say, vitamin A deficiency is a serious problem. So we'll produce vitamin A in the plant. So if you eat that rice, you can have as much as vitamin A as possible. But do you know, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. So it's not just enough to have vitamin A, but you also need to have enough fat. But if you have that enough fat in your food, you don't need golden rice. In 2005, we came across a farmer in Guntur who was cultivating BT Bindi. We were shocked. He said, how did you get it? He said, company gave me the seeds. We went to the company. They said, we are doing a trial. We went to the government. Government said, yeah, they are testing. He said, you are not permitted. It was taken off in 2005. 2013, similarly, we came across a cotton, herbicide tolerant cotton, which is grown. No permissions. In 2009, when BT Brinjal was permitted, there was a public discussion. That was the only time there was a public discussion to introduce whether we need a food or not, and it was banned. Sometimes some wise politicians take better decisions. But otherwise, we would not, by this time, would have been flooded with the GM foods. Today, there is a case pending in the Supreme Court. There is an expert committee appointed by Supreme Committee, Supreme Court, which said, we don't need this for the next 10 years, let's wait. There is a parliamentary standing committee which was appointed, it also said, we don't need. But don't know how they are going to come into your plate. Food is not only gives you energy, it is also good for your health. It can treat many of the diseases. Food is a medicine. It can act as a preventive medicine. It can also act as curative medicine. I know many people who are working on treating autism with good food. Many of the problems which you are seeing, obesity, diabetes, blood pressure, all are because of the food which you eat. You need to make a right choice about your food. Second, what food does to the environment? Let's look at the ecological footprints. How many of you have seen rice fields? Almost all, right? What comes to the mind when we think of rice fields? Full of water. How much water it takes to produce a, an acre of rice? Six million liters. Six million liters per acre of rice, which is equivalent to 100 families' annual consumption. One family of five members eats about a kg of rice a day. 
which is equivalent to a tanker of water. 180 showers. If all of us want to eat rice, more and more water you need in production of rice. We were making a calculation how much one meal of rice in Hyderabad costs an environment. It's probably as big as a Polovaram dam. We need to worry about the ecological footprints. It's not just about water, about the pesticides, about the growth hormones, everything. What agriculture leaves before it comes to your plate. Not just that. What it does to the farmers. The more and more pesticides you spray, insects get resistance, they don't work. First time you spray, second time you spray, th third time you spray, fifth time you drink. That's what we are seeing all along, farmer suicides. And the fallouts of such things, it's an increasing cost of cultivation, but the prices are not increasing. Do you know one kg of rice to produce, it costs 2,100 rupees as per the government calculation. But today the price is only 1,400 for farmers. Today a ton of sugar, sugar cane, is 2,000 rupees. A ton of firewood is 4,000 rupees. How farmers can live? The policies are also lopsided. Today, average income of 83% of the farmers in this country is only 5,000 rupees. Only 5,000 rupees. So farmers have lost their economic independence. Not just economic independence, physical independence as well. These were the photographs which we have taken. Farmers standing in queue for fertilizers. Standing in queue for seeds. Seeds which they can produce. Fertilizer which they can make by composting. But they are not subsidized. If you buy from the market, they are subsidized. Lopsided policies from the government. All these have led to farmer suicides. In the last 20 years, 3 lakh farmers have committed suicide. Every day about 48. What is the point in just discussing about the dark side of the picture? How much and what we can do to change the situations? Some of us who are working in agriculture, various institutions came together and then we started an organization called Center for Sustainable Agriculture in 2004. We started working with farmers, telling them how they can move away from the high external input based agriculture to low external input based agriculture. It was not easy. But what we found is across the country there are wonderful experiences. But all those experiences are caught in ideological frameworks. They don't talk to each other. They're good things, they're bad things. But if they discuss with each other, it would have been good. They never talk to each other. Mainstream institutions never worried about them. So we brought all the practices together, evolved what we call as the sustainable agriculture practices. The first success came in Punukula. Punukula is a village in Kamam district which became completely pesticide free. The village which was spending about 60 lakhs per annum, they completely stopped using pesticides. <laughs> agriculture minister came, he said, wonderful, what do you want? He asked farmers. Farmers said, make Hi, Andhra Pradesh pesticide free. He was amazed. He said, certainly I'll do, but what do you want? I said, we are happy with what we have, but just change all the agriculture practices. He brought all the agriculture university scientists and department of agriculture together to see and then make a change. They said, sir, this is one village, we can't do it. It is not possible. Then came Yanabavi. This is about 80 kilometers from here. Completely organic village. In the last three years, more than 10,000 people have visited the village to know how they are doing farming. But this also has not changed anything on the government. But consumers have changed. Many people started understanding what is good for them. This is an advertisement which Hindu uses for itself. This is a village called Dorli. Dorli is in Varda. After Telangana, you hear a lot of suicides from Varda. In 2005, the village was put up for sale. Farmers decided we can't do farming. They have put up the village for sale. We went there in 2006. We said, can we start working together? Today, all of them have paid their, repaid their loans. All of them are back to farming. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. All examples are in front of us. We started also working with the women's self-help groups in Andhra Pradesh. These are the cover stories of the Down to Earth magazine, which tracked the whole change. We started with 225 acres in 2005. Today, it's about 35 lakh acres in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana together pesticide free. 50% of the pesticide use in the state has come down. 50%. We were third in the country in terms of per acre pesticide use. Today we are 20th in the country. This was part of a show on Sachimeva Jayate. 
Some of you might have seen. In this show, we had an interesting discussion. The other side was a person who was selling the, he was the largest pesticide seller in this country. Towards the end, Amir Khan asked me a question. I'm fully convinced what you are saying and what you are doing. It is possible to do in India. But how can I convince this man who is sitting here? I said, ask his brother. His brother is the largest organic exporter in this country. <laughs> and he said, yes, that shows. People see it as a business. So if pesticide sells, they sell pesticides. If organic sells, they sell organic. You buy pesticides or other organic pesticides or a certificate from us saying you have not used any of these things. Farmers are made into consumers. But what our consumers are doing? Then what we did is, we brought some consumers in Hyderabad together to form a consumer cooperative called Sahaja Ahar. And we brought all the farmers also together to form farmers cooperatives so that they can market directly. Today we have 20 farmers cooperatives who produce organically and directly sell in the market. Well, many of you worry about the organic food prices. The organic Sahaja Aram food prices are around 20% lower than the market prices. And 75% of what consumers pay goes to the farmers. In the regular market, it is just 20% which goes to the farmers. <laughs> what do I see from here? I see a ray of hope. It's possible. If all of us can join hands together, we can make a change. But it's a long way to go in terms of government policies. Still, there is a serious crisis in agriculture. Yesterday, you might have seen about the farmers who said, today morning newspaper, you might have seen, number of farmers are dying. It's the responsibility of all of us. Business as usual is not an option. We need to change as consumers. We need to change as farmers. And we all need together come together, pressurize government to make a change. Otherwise, the future is very, very bleak. Thank you.